welcome. My name is uh, Dimitris Odiopoulos. This, uh, this is going to uh, be held in, in English uh, language, although uh, most of the participants are, are coming from Greece. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, one-hour presentation. Uh, it, uh, it will cover two topics. So it's about organic, the organic control system. Uh, we're going to, to see uh, the overview of the organic control system uh, as it is uh, implemented in the uh, European Union and, of course, uh, in, in Greece and other countries in, the, in Europe. And, of course, uh, the same system applies also to uh, all those countries or uh, 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 those countries that uh, bear uh, equivalent guarantees regarding the production and control of organic products. Uh, so this uh, will be the first part. Of course, uh, it's, it's a limited presentation. We could uh, talk for hours about uh, all these issues, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll try to be brief and precise regarding the, uh, uh, the setup of the system in the EU. And for the second part of the presentation, we have a, a, an overview of uh, the new regulation that is going to uh, come into force by the end of this year by the 1st of January 2021. So uh, it will replace uh, the, the current system of uh, production control and labeling of organic products. So um, of course, all stakeholders, uh, operators and certification bodies and competent authorities in, the, in member states and third countries, they, they all have to be uh, prepared accordingly. So now I will uh, uh, share my screen in order to uh, start with the presentation. So if you have any kind of questions or whatever, I think that it would be for the best to uh, uh, write them down either in the, uh, uh, as a text in this, uh, uh, this dialogue box that we have on, on our left, or otherwise uh, we will have something like half an hour after the, at the end of the presentation to uh, discuss on a particular topics that you're interested in. So, I will start sharing now. Okay, I, I think that uh, now you can see the, the presentation, right? Okay, uh, if I may briefly introduce myself, my name is uh, Dimitris Sotiropoulos, I, I, I'm an agronomist. I work in the uh, uh, organic farming sector, um, predominantly with uh, certification bodies since 1998. Uh, so currently, for at least for the last decade, I work as a freelancer, as an organic control expert, uh, working to, uh, both in Greece and abroad, in other uh, European countries and third countries around the world with uh, uh, control authorities, competent authorities and certification bodies. I also worked for the last four years as, uh, uh, as a tutor for the European Commission. I'm specialized in uh, BTSF trainings. These are specific trainings that uh, 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 these are addressed for, uh, to competent authorities like accreditation bodies ministry officials and so on uh, in the, throughout the European Union in order to have a, a, a more harmonized approach in order to uh, for, for the implementation of the, of the organic control system. Um, so to start with, uh, we're going to see the overview of, uh, of the organic of the setup of the system of controls in organic. And then we're going to uh, focus uh, mainly in the uh, responsibilities that uh, the, the operators have against this, uh, this particular system for, for the production and certification of organic products. Uh, so uh, the overall, let's say, the, the, uh, in a way, the scheme manager and the, the overall administration of the system in, uh, uh, in the European Union uh, is governed by the European Commission and particularly by DG Agri which is the, the, uh, the main authority, the, the main uh, director general that uh, uh, drafts uh, the, the regulations, amends the regulations accordingly since uh, 1991, when the first uh, uh, regulation was uh, uh, entered into force. So uh, also DG Sante has a particular role. Uh, this is the uh, 
they have to do with uh, the hygiene, the, the implementation of the uh, of the official food and feed control system. And of course, the director of F is uh, for those who know it as uh, as FVO, Food and Veterinary Office. This is uh, this has now uh, 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 it has been a directorate uh, uh, since two years now. And the, the, this uh, particular uh, uh, organization is uh, uh, responsible for the controls of the system. So these uh, they uh, they have these task forces and they send them to uh, member states or different countries in order to audit uh, uh, the, the member states, the competent authorities, the CBs working there, and particularly the operators in order to, uh, to check out the efficiency and the effectiveness of the system uh, in, uh, in the various member states. Uh, EU Commission, the EU Commission and especially DG Agri is uh, supported by the COP. This is a, a body, uh, it's the Committee on Organic Production. This is a body that consists of uh, experts from the ministries of the uh, of the of the 27 member states. Uh, they have regular meetings uh, throughout the year, uh, at least uh, five or six times a year, and they discuss about all the new amendments, all the uh, the things that come in, uh, in, into light uh, with the implementation of the uh, of the control system and the production of organic products in the EU. Oh, they also handle uh, cases uh, about the uh, imported uh, products, certified products, certified organic products from third countries, and so on. So this is the uh, uh, the, uh, the committee that decides upon the, the implementation, the, the the new amendments on the regulations, and they take decisions regarding uh, the implementation of controls. Uh, technically, uh, the EU Commission and COP, of course, they are assisted by ECTO which is the expert group on technical advice, I think, on organic production. So this consists of uh, private experts, not necessarily uh, uh, proportionate to the uh, 27 uh, European member states. And uh, they uh, assess all the, uh, the, the, uh, the new entries in the annexes of the regulation. So it's, it's a clear technical group. All four things that have to um, uh, are implemented by derogation, or things that are excluded from the regulations, uh, 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 sometimes. So, uh, ETOP uh, assesses all new all, all the substances all, uh, that you know, we li see listed in the uh, in the implemented regulation eight eight nine of two thousand eight, and they uh, provide with uh, 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 the European Commission DG Agri with uh, with a scientific opinion. Uh, below, we have the member states, we have the EEA countries. Uh, these are the European economic area countries like uh, uh, Norway, Iceland and uh, Switzerland. I think these are the, the only three countries uh, under the EEA agreement. And third country competent authorities where we have two different kinds of third countries. Let's say we, we group them uh, differently according to the annexes of regulation 1235 for importation of for certified products from third countries. So we have countries that have some kind of trade agreements with the European Commission. And we have other, other kind of countries that they don't have uh, any kind of trade agreements in, in, in force. So uh, there we have uh, mainly predominantly uh, uh, private certification bodies that are recognized for uh, certifying organic products according to the EU production and control system. So uh, the member states, of course, it's applicable to third countries also and EEA countries. We have uh, in, in parallel accreditation bodies that they have a particular task to accredit private certification body, uh, bodies only against the requirements of ISO 17065 for uh, product certification uh, schemes. Uh, below in this, let's say, uh, in this uh, hierarchy of controls, we have the control authorities or control bodies. So in Greece, for, uh, for, for instance, or in Germany, we have uh, uh, only system, uh, uh, the system of, of, of uh, delegated uh, uh, private control bodies. While in other countries, we have also control authorities that are responsible for the control of operators in, uh, in organic. Like uh, well, this system is applicable in, uh, uh, 
in the Netherlands or in Spain, where uh, they have control authorities instead of control bodies. And below, uh, on the bottom, we have the operators. The operators are responsible, of course, for the production uh, of uh, all the uh, organic products that we have uh, uh, that are certified and can be distributed uh, in the uh, European uh, market. And parallel to this system, we have also the European Court of Auditors. For those who may not know it, it's an independent uh, body. It's, uh, it's not governed or controlled by the European Commission. So it has uh, uh, the independence to, uh, and the task to, uh, uh, to check the effectiveness uh, of the control system in place and the production and the implementation of uh, production rules. So the European Court of Auditors uh, has been engaged, uh, uh, I would say, uh, recently, like uh, no more than 10 years ago. Uh, where they were uh, asked to assess the uh, the effectiveness of the control system in place in the European Union. In the European uh, Union, so we have uh, so far, if I'm if I recollect well, uh, two uh, two assessment reports from the European Court of Auditors. So, in order to to, to clarify what the, what their role uh, their role, uh, they they check the uh, effectiveness of the system so this means that uh, even the eu commission and uh, the member states the competent authorities everyone is un under scrutiny uh, from this uh, particular body and they have like uh, the, the uh, issue a report identifying all, all, all the shortcomings that they uh, encountered uh, 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 during their controls and they ask the european commission to uh, take the necessary corrective uh, uh, um, actions in order to uh, 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 to make controls uh, effective again. So, what is the basis of the control system? The, the, this uh, uh, control system for for organic production uh, and certification is not um, a, a complete standalone system of controls. It's uh, part of the uh, official food and feed control system that is. Uh, 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 identified in Regulation 82, formerly the, the former food and feed uh, official food and feed control regulation, that has been uh, uh, replaced now by Regulation 625 from uh, of 2017. This change has come uh, into force since the beginning of, of this year of 2020. So uh, it's very important to, or to to know that the organic control system is part of the official food and feed control system. Most of the controls in every uh, European member state are, are, are conducted and uh, uh, programmed, uh, controlled, of course, by the national food safety authorities mainly and other competent authorities like custom authorities or uh, prefectures here in, in, in Greece with, uh, from, for the autonomous areas. And, but uh, you know, organic uh, production is part of this control system. The, the, the national control systems in place for food and feed. Uh, what is also uh, an additional requirement is that the whole control system is, is, uh, is based uh, in the application of precautionary and control measures from the side of the operators themselves. So this is important to uh, identify that all the stakeholders in the system, they, have, they, they play a particular role in that system. So even uh, uh, the operators, the producers, and the uh, processors, everyone uh, has a, 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 a part, a proportion of, of the system. So the setup of the system, we're not going to go into a lot of detail about that, but I have uh, divided uh, two different characteristics of the system. We have, uh, to, uh, in one hand, we have the nature of controls, which means what kind of controls we select to implement for, for, for checking organic production and eventually come with a, with a positive certification decision or, or a negative one. So uh, this, the nature could be like the type of control, like unannounced inspections or uh, ad hoc inspections that are performed for sampling and laboratory testing and so on. And then we have another particular characteristic, it's a, qualitative, a quantitative uh, 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 item that is the frequency of controls. 
So, for example, regulation uh, 834 of 2007, the, the current regulation identifies that the, the verification of compliance. So, uh, all producers they have to be inspected, controlled at least annually, once a year. So, additionally to this uh, system uh, with uh, uh, of controls, we have the the application, as I told you, of the precautionary and control measures carried out by the operators themselves and the minimum control requirements which are product specific uh, ca product category specific actually so this is uh, uh, a more detailed and explanatory uh, 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 a case of, of controls that is uh, uh, divided that there are specific uh, uh, preconditions and requirements identified in the implementing regulation 889 of 2008 so this is for every product category specifically so for processing we have specific minimum control requirements additional to the general control requirements for plant production we have a different a different set of control requirements for aquaculture and uh, uh, livestock production we have other sets of control requirements and so on and the basis for the selection of controls, the type of controls, and uh, when the control should be carried out by the control bodies or control authorities are, uh, should be based on the assessment of risk of, uh, of the occurrence of non-compliances, of either irregularities or infringements, as they are identified in the regulation. So the whole approach and the whole uh, um, strategy of uh, planning controls uh correctly from the side of the control authorities or control bodies uh, that have all these delegated tasks it has to be based on a risk assessment uh that's even more important now from uh 2021 since the uh new regulation is focusing uh, uh on this particular requirement uh, on the risk assessment uh of uh, for controls so about uh, who should be controlled, who, who has the obligation to be certified in order to um, uh, distribute, you know, place products uh, certified as organic in the market. So, actually, all operators are under control with the exception of two particular uh, categories of operators. Wholesalers, only in the cases that they are dealing with pre-packed products, so they have no kind of processing, no kind of handling, and no kind of preparation um, uh, activities in place. So if they buy and sell pre-packed food, then they could be exempted from the uh, from the control system. No need for, for them to be certified, that's the point. And uh, also operators selling to the final consumer or user. So this is another uh, exemption to the rule, and it's up to the member states uh, to uh, I, to, uh, um, to decide whether they want those uh, categories of operators to be included in the system uh, or not. So, uh, when it comes to the EU regulation, these uh, these operators are excluded. But uh, if the member states, any of the member states, decides differently, uh, it, uh, it has uh, absolutely. Uh, any right to do it in, in its own uh, territory. What is also included in the terms of operators, because there, there are some misunderstandings, it was identified uh, uh, from the uh, FVO, now director at F controls throughout all these, the last 20 years, that there were a lot of uh, in misinterpretations of, uh, of, of the scope and the coverage of the organic control system. So the uh, uh, the control system should include also storage of, uh, uh, or transport of the products, any labeling activities, importation, of course, from any third country, and subcontracting activities, any kind of subcontracting activity. So um, for storage and transport, it means that uh, if uh, uh, an operator engages a logistics company to carry out part of the uh, of these activities on behalf of him then uh, storage and transportation is considered to be a subcontracting activity and it has to be under control. So the subcontractor, the storage uh, facility, the transportation company and the vehicles, they have to be 
uh, included uh, in, in the scope of the regulation. So they have to find uh, their own uh, certification body or control authority to have a, a contract with uh, in terms of control. So what are the boundaries of the organic control system? Uh, it's important to say that uh, I will highlight once again that organic controls are part of the official control system. This is very important to, to remember. So uh, and it's expected by CBs, uh, by certification bodies and uh, control authorities that are working in the sector, is that they will have to uh, inspect, control all operators that are, are, are under contract with them, particularly. Uh, if they implement uh, the requirements that are applicable for them, according to the production, labeling, and uh, the, the control system that uh, we identify in these regulations, regulation. 834 of 2007, Regulation 889 of 2008. But apart from this, of course, since the CBs and uh, since the, the organic control system is part of the official food and feed control system, uh, if the CB or control authority identifies some kind of breach of other uh, mandatory requirements of the food and feed uh, uh, regulations, then they, they will not take uh, necessarily any measures against the, these operators, but they, they have the obligation to notify the competent authorities about it. So if there is some kind of food threat, a food, a food uh, safety threat, or uh, some kind of uh, uh, fraudulent behavior identified or whatever, uh, the, the CB or the control authority may not have the, the, the required legal uh, 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 background to, uh, to do something about it, but they have to uh, to notify the, the competent authority in order for them to take any necessary measures against uh, a particular operator. So, uh, moving to the operator's main responsibilities, um, we have, a, I have uh, um, actually identified the, the most important ones because it's, uh, it's a very long in conversation and uh, the other thing that I have not done in this presentation because uh, time is uh, uh, is limited is that I, I have not identified the main responsibilities for certification bodies or control authorities and of course the European Commission or the uh, the competent authorities in, in the member states or third countries. So if you want to discuss further about the role of the authorities. Uh, I would be glad to to, uh, to answer your questions, but by the end of this uh, presentation, now we're going to focus uh, on the uh, operator's main responsibilities. So, uh, once the, an operator uh, decides to submit his undertaking uh, in the control system, this is the most important one. Uh, when when somebody wants to uh, any operator, any producer or processor or whatever uh, wishes to uh, place. Uh, place on the market products that bear any kind of you know, indications referring to, to organic production, uh, meaning that uh, if I want to label a product of mine uh, like uh, organic products of any uh, any sort, then I'm, uh, at that moment I have to submit my uh, uh, my production site, my uh, my undertaking my uh, processing facility or whatever to the control system that is uh, uh, mentioned, described in Regulation 834 and Regulation 889. And at the same time, I will have to notify my activity to the competent authority of that member state. So submitting an, an undertaking means that I have to uh, identify an authorized control body or control authority in, in the country where my activity takes place. So if I produce in Greece, I will have to seek uh, a Greek certification. If I produce, if I have a processing facility in, in Germany or in another country in the European Union, I will have to uh, seek uh, certification in that country where the activity takes place. And I will have to notify the, uh, the local competent authority. In Greece, the competent authority is actually the Ministry uh, of Agriculture, which has uh, delegated this task to the operators. Um, so, in other countries, we, there, there are other, uh, you know, uh, the, the systems are varying. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, 
uh, there is uh, always a government authority and there, uh, there's always uh, a control authority or control body uh, that is responsible for controls. Uh, the other thing that uh, the operators have uh, the main responsibility is to comply uh, by the time that they, they decide to sign a contract with control bodies and uh, notify the competent authority of bodies, uh, they will have to implement and comply uh, as a minimum with the production rules and the implementing rules identified in the implementing regulation 889 of 2008. Uh, they will also have the, uh, the obligation to keep uh, uh, organic, uh, if we are talking about mixed uh, uh, mixed enterprises uh, or mixed uh, uh, production sites, meaning producing organic and non-organic, they, they have the obligation to uh, keep always uh, the land animals and products separate organic from non-organic. And they will need to keep proper documentation as well they have to keep uh, uh, some sort of uh, an effective bookkeeping system in order to identify uh, at all times uh, organic products and non-organic products. Uh, another uh, obligation is the verification of the certificates of, of the, the suppliers. So this is uh, a part of the um, uh, of, of the control. Uh, obligations of uh, of operators in the system, uh, because as I told you, uh, it's not only the, the control system is uh, uh, is very dynamic, and it has uh, specific roles and uh, obligations for uh, uh, all stakeholders uh, involved. So uh, even producers have uh, uh, specific obligations towards the, the, the control system regarding uh, self-assessments and, uh, of course, the, the verification of some elements of control. So one of the key objectives here is that whenever uh, an, an operator in the system, this is particularly uh, applicable for processing of operation, that buy organic products from other operators certified in the system. So they have the obligation to always, always verify the validity of the certificates of their suppliers. Uh, at the time of the uh, 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 before the initial control takes place, uh, the operators uh, they have the uh, the obligation to uh, submit to the CBO control authority a full description of the units, uh, their premises, uh, and the activity that they they uh, they will have under control. So this would, uh, should include uh, this is also obligatory uh, both the. Uh, the, the, the land animals and uh, premises and activities that uh, will be um, uh, 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 they will be subject to the control system of organic but also uh, any kind of non-organic uh, activities that they will still uh, uh, keep after their uh, their submission to the control system so full description means everything it means that now um, uh, a very detailed uh, description of uh, what uh, uh, of their operations in, in total. Uh, this will give the, the opportunity to the uh, certification bodies and control authorities to uh, assess the situation, uh, assess the precautionary measures identified uh, by the operators themselves, and uh, the minimum control requirements that will be also identified by operators themselves. And of course, to plan uh, their controls on their own in the most proper way. So, uh, uh, as I told you, all these characteristics they, they have to be submitted to the CB in uh, in writing. In uh, most of the cases, we see that uh, CBs and control authorities they develop uh, particular templates or forms in order to facilitate operators to. Uh, uh, give as much information as uh, required by the CBs to uh, plan their controls uh, in, in, in the best possible way. I have seen um, such, let's say, description forms uh, ranging from four pages long up to uh, 25 or 30 pages long. Uh, of course, the, the, there is a principle here, the more the better. The, uh, this is a, a knowledge-based uh, and information-based system, so uh, the uh, control authorities and control bodies involved they 
needs to have as much information possible in order to uh, plan controls in the most effective and uh, appropriate way. So other kinds of uh, responsibilities uh, will be that uh, the operators, they have to acknowledge the fact that if uh, in the future, after submitting their undertakings to uh, the organic control system, in uh, if the CAs or control authorities identify uh, breaches of this uh, of the basic requirements, then uh, they will have to accept any kind of enforcement measures that are identified in uh, in these particular member states, and of course in uh, uh, in liaison with uh, the minimum requirements set out in the regulations. Uh, Another thing would be to inform in writing uh, their buyers, the clients of, uh, of the operators, in case that products that they produce or they have distributed, they uh, have been, uh, they don't, uh, they are not organic. So uh, uh, in any such case, there were uh, non conformities are identified, which also, of course, um, have a negative uh, stage on the uh, on the integrity, the organic integrity of the products. Then it's a it's a very crucial uh, obligation to notify the buyers in order to uh, either recall the products from the market or to uh, ensure that the indications referring to organic production will be removed for non-compliant products. Uh, so. Uh, Another thing is that uh, whenever uh, an operator withdraws mm -hmm. from the system, decides to withdraw, he, uh, the op that operator will have to uh, inform immediately the competent authority and the CB or control authority that he's uh, uh, working with. So about the CB, of course, it makes sense because he, ha he will have to um, uh, stop uh, the contract and any, any, any kind of uh, legal um, Actions that were made uh, derived from that contract, uh, but on the, at the same time, they will also have to notify the company of the But we have uh, the company authority shall have to be notified once an operator enters the system and once an operator uh, leaves the system. Uh, another uh, important thing would be to keep stock and financial records in the unit or the premises, so they will have to be there at all times. So when the CB, for instance, decides to uh, go for an unannounced inspection without any prior notification to that operator, the, the stocks and financial records should be in place uh, for, for control. And of course, they have to be updated uh, regularly in order for the uh, control of or your control body uh, inspectors to do uh, to perform the, their tasks in, in the best possible way. Uh, they, the operators in organic, they have to set up a, 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 an effective traceability system, which means that they have to uh, be able to identify the uh, the products uh, one step back and one step forth in the supply chain. This is not, of course, an, uh, uh, something peculiar. It's uh, it's a horizontal uh, obligation uh, in the food to feed control system. So it's not something you know mandatory only for organic producers, but it's uh, for, for organic production. It's very very important to have uh, 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 effective traceability. Otherwise, the whole system uh, could be compromised. This was one of the key uh, issues that the European Court of Auditors uh, has highly highlighted in the past in their first uh, reports towards the uh, European Commission, because the traceability system uh, in Europe in general was not effective. Like 60% uh, of the cases where the uh, of products bought in the supermarket could not be fully traced back to the, the origin of uh, uh, of the products in the in the sites that uh, they were uh, uh, they were coming from so this system has improved a lot uh, especially uh, during the last five years but nevertheless it's one of the cornerstones of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the organic control system it's also important to highlight that uh, the operators upon uh, submitting their undertaking to the control to the organic control system they uh, they grant access 
uh, to the CBO Control Authority to all the parts of, of the units, to all their accounts, to uh, everything that could be uh, relevant to the production and control. So uh, they cannot hide anything from the control bodies or control authorities. This is very important to know before they start uh, uh, with, uh, with organic certification. Uh, Self-assessment. This is uh, 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 the, uh, the self-checks that should be performed by the operators themselves in order to check the, the, the compliance level of their operations. If this is not very often uh, met uh, by, uh, by operators, but nevertheless, it's a key requirement in the system. So the, the more the operators are in, in, in control and can prove that are in control of, of, the, uh, of the applicable production rules for them, uh, so the, the more efficient is the, the, the overall system of controls in the European Union. So this is also very important, and I think that the, uh, with the new regulation, uh, the, the, the control system is going to uh, put a, a, a lot of light in that particular requirement for the, the, the role of the, uh, of the operators themselves in the control system. So uh, moving to the requirements of the uh, new regulation, I think that it would be more proper to uh, have all, all the questions by the end of the presentation. Uh, right. uh, so regarding the new regulation, um, this has been uh, initiated a long way back. It started off like, uh, very soon after uh, the uh, reg the current regulation was set into force. So by the time, by 2009, uh, imagine that uh, regulation A34 that we, uh, that we have in force at the moment uh, came into force, replacing the old regulation 2092. So uh, after three years, the European Commission decided to review the whole uh, uh, regulatory framework and they have launched a very long impact assessment for a year and a half. After that period, uh, they collected all these uh, uh, the, the, the inputs in the system of the, for the impact assessment. And on March 2014, after uh, several discussions with uh, the COP, with the uh, Committee on Organic Production, they uh, eventually did not reach a compromise, which of course uh, made the whole situation of the new regulation very complicated, as you will see. Uh, but they um, managed to come up with a dossier, uh, a proposal for a new organic regulation. The fact that they could not reach a compromise with the member states in 2014, after nearly a year and a half of, uh, of discussions, uh, meant that, we, that there should be another way to um, reach this compromise and the, uh, the, the code decision uh, process uh, was initiated because this is a way uh, the, uh, the European works. So uh, the European Commission submitted this uh, proposal for the new regulation to two different uh, uh, institutes, institutions, uh, European institutions, the Agriculture Minister's Council, uh, and the European Parliament. So they worked on this particular uh, dossier, on the proposal, in parallel, but uh, completely not together. So uh, uh, each institution worked uh, on this proposal by itself. So if we see the political process that uh, followed in uh, June 20, uh, 2015, 2015, the Council discussed this, this uh, proposal over three uh, uh, council presidencies, the Greek, Italian, and Latvian, and then they managed to reach some kind of compromise, a, a general approach uh, or, or something, uh, after more than a year. During that time, the, parliament, uh, the parliamentary process was even uh, more complicated because we were uh, just before the uh, European elections, so they had to wait for the new uh, body to be uh, elected and they initiated the uh, uh, the uh, uh, this uh, proposal review uh, by October 2015 so uh, they adopted a, a report by the end of uh, 2015 and after uh, this uh, uh, all proposals were uh, on the table 
then we started the uh, so-called trialogue negotiations. So uh, all the institutions, they had to uh, create ad hoc committees and discuss uh, all together on the final uh, document that could be adopted in the end. So it was uh, part of the trial, the, the, the institutions were the European Commission, of course, with DG Agri and the UNB4 for production, uh, the Council, the European Council and the European Parliament. So it took 18 trilogue meetings and four council presidencies later, uh, in total seven council presidencies in order to reach an agreement by the end of uh, uh, by June 2017, and in, if you take uh, into consideration the legal checks that they were required and the translation to the official languages of the European Union uh, member states, the final text of this regulation 848 of 2018 was adopted uh, finally by the Council on May 2018. So this is the new regulation. 848 after a very long uh, uh, process uh, and uh, this will come into force, this will apply on January 1st, 2021. What is very important to identify here is that the new regulation, uh, this is again uh, a setup like the old regulatory system that we have in force now. Uh, we have, uh, at the moment, we have two regulations. We have Regulation 834 of 2007, which is the legal framework for organic production controls and labeling. And we have also the uh, implementing regulation, which is how these uh, production rules and uh, control uh, uh, provisions are, uh, should be implemented uh, in, in the member states. So this regulation is a regulation 889 of 2008. Uh, more or less, the same system will uh, uh, will apply with the, with the new regulations also. So, what uh, Regulation 848 of 2018 is all about is the legal, but it's uh, very much more um, detailed than the old regulation, uh, Regulation 834. And we still that's the the, uh, the most important point that we still. Uh, expect from the European Commission the implementing acts. So we don't have at the moment uh, the regulation that will identify how these uh, production rules, the control requirements, and the labeling requirements, so all these uh, things that are uh, in detail mentioned regulation in the new regulation 848, how they're going to be actually implemented. So we still wait for the implementing acts. And of course, this will. Uh, uh, bring a lot of light and uh, uh, various things that are still very um, uh, shaped in this uh, new regulation. Uh, in this review, we are going to focus uh, not in detail, of course, but we're going to focus on the uh, new things that are uh, uh, either newly new, make constitute a significant change of this uh, new regulation in comparison to the old uh, system. So. Starting off from the scope, we have uh, we have a, a new approach. Uh, the scope is uh, much more expanded than the uh, system, than the scope of the regulation that we have so far. So there are three main categories identified in the new regulation. We have live or unprocessed agricultural products, which includes also uh, the the, the uh, category D that we have right now. It, it includes seeds and other plant reproductive material. So categories uh, A and category D that we currently have are going to be covered by only one category, category A in the new regulation. So we have the new regulation scope in the uh, on the left, and we have the, the old the current regulation scope on the right. So uh, there is no change about uh, product category B. We have the, these are the processed agricultural products for use as food. And then uh, we have also no change in category C, which is feed. Uh, what is changing considerably is that with the new regulation, we have a new uh, annex that lists all other food products and products that were not covered by the control system so far or can, could not be officially certified as organic in the European Union and, uh, and marketed like this as organic. 
they are they will be covered with a new uh, regulation. So Annex 1 lists uh, other kinds of food products and feed. So yeasts are included, which are also uh, covered by the current system. But we have new things like mate, oat, sweet corn, vine leaves, uh, products that were not uh, uh, clearly covered by the uh, regulation in every European country, and other kinds of edible parts of plants. So actually, what they have done uh, is that they, uh, they introduced a new scope uh the uh, products identified as food in the uh treaty of the european uh of the european union this is why it's more expanded so for instance uh one of the uh, uh new uh, new uh, things new categories of food that are, are covered by the the system will be covered by the system is uh sea salt which was not is not covered by the current system or silkworm cocoons that can will be certified as organic or beeswax and uh, other things like uh, cork or cotton or wool so these these kinds of or these categories of products are not certified at the moment uh, in some countries you may find certified products but under uh, private schemes but they, these products were not are not currently covered by the uh or clearly covered by the EU regulations with a new system they're not they're, all of them are going to be included uh to be certified as organic produced and certified as organic so regarding labeling um, we don't expect a lot of changes uh what are the new uh key things that uh, i have identified is that uh, first of all we have a, a more flexible way to identify the origin of ingredients in uh, in processed products so uh with the current system when, uh, uh everyone that uh, a product every processed product that uh, of uh, more than one ingredient that uh, uh, bears indication to refer to organic production shall have to bury also the, the the European logo, uh, this green flag we leave, uh, and the stars that is very uh, popular and people know it. And uh, below that, uh, there, there are two references uh, that are mandatory below this uh, this EU logo. Uh, it's the the code number of the control authority or control body that is was responsible for the control of that operator, and. Uh, a, 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 uh, the identification of the origin of the products. So for products that were produced or processed in the EU, uh, which means that 98% of the ingredients have been farmed in the EU, then uh, it's the, the, the reference is EU agriculture. So if a 98%, this is the current state of play, okay? So if the, if the uh, products, 98% uh, of the, these products were farmed in Greece, for example, it could the, the EU reference could be replaced by Greece. So uh, you could have uh, the logo on, on the labeling of the product, the code number below that, and uh, Greece agriculture just below the, uh, the code number of the CV. So what's new with, uh, with the new regulation is that this uh, percentage drops from 98% to 95%. So it's a, a bit more flexible for operators regarding the origin of the products and the new thing that is also introduced that would be uh, most probably combined with other uh, horizontal regulations that have to do with uh, uh, with the, uh, the origin of the products is that uh, operators will be allowed to specify a particular region to cement an indication to the name of the country so instead of eu or greece agriculture uh, if 95% of the ingredients are found in Attica region, then you could have like something a reference like Attica, Greece, agriculture, and so on. We're not entirely uh, in, in how this is going to uh, appear. We know that there is a, a, a rule about that, but we still uh, expect the implementing act uh, in order to, uh, to see how this is uh, expected to be implemented by the operators in, in the future after uh, the 1st of January 2021. Uh, regarding the use of flavorings, this is a, 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 this is a very important uh, change. 
because uh, at the moment uh, with the current system that we have in place all those flavorings that are uh, referred to in uh, the implementing regulation uh, 889 of 2008 and they are mentioned they are listed positively in annex 6 of that regulation they are um, uh, uh, eligible for, for operators to use in um, in organic uh, you know, processed product uh, recipes. But there is a, a, a big change uh, up ahead because from 2021, only natural flavorings and only from certified organic production, they are going to be uh, uh, allowed for use in, uh, in organic uh, processed products. So, only we focus on natural flavorings. Uh, in order to identify what natural flavoring is, uh, there is a particular regulation, horizontal regulation governing uh, the, the use of, of uh, flavorings and the uh, uh, labeling of flavorings in the European Union. Uh, so it will be, of course, all, all these requirements are going to be in uh, uh, association with uh, the minimum requirements set out in that regulation as well. So uh, it's uh, good to remember that uh, we have this particular change. So only natural flavorings are going to be allowed, and these flavorings they need to be certified organic. So uh, a very big change that has to do with the organization of controls would be the uh, group certification system. So this is entirely new. Uh, this is something that was not in place before, since uh, to 1981, when we had the first, the very first uh, regulation for organic. And this is a system where uh, the operators, they form some kind of group by themselves, and uh, they are responsible for uh, the large part of the controls. So uh, we don't have sufficient time to go into uh, a lot of detail about the um, the setup of the controls in group certification options, but definitely uh, what, what I would uh, like to highlight here is that a, a significant part of the controls that are, should be carried out by the control authority or control body at, at now, for instance, this will be uh, a responsibility for the group itself. So the idea would be that the group uh, will be uh, in control of, of its own production and the uh, the external CB, the external control body or control authority will have as a main task to identify the efficiency of the controls that are uh, carried out by the group itself to its own group members. So in uh, cases of group certification, uh, is uh, we have the group that will be uh, certified only as uh, as one legal entity. So it means that you know, the group can only be covered by one certificate, and no member of the group can uh, uh, individually sell any products as organic by him or her or herself. So if a producer decides to become a member of the group, they must bear in mind that they are restricted to sell products only through the group and as a group, not individually. This is very important. The reason behind that is that the, the European Commission wants to, to uh, give the opportunity to small farmers throughout the European Union to overcome any kind of uh, problems that uh, could be uh, associated with the cost of certification. So uh, an uh, organization of uh, like a, a group uh, could handle the costs and any other uh, particular uh, things that have to do with the organization of uh, production controls more easily on behalf of its group members. We'll see how it's going to, to develop. It's, uh, of course, in, in third countries, it's uh, very common, especially in some uh, developing countries around the world. It's not new. It has been uh, implemented for years now and, uh, of course, accepted by the EU Commission. But this uh, completely new for EU farmers. So, uh, regarding the uh, setup of the groups, uh, who can be part of a group? This is different than uh, the uh, uh, the minimum requirements that are set uh, by the European Commission for uh, third country uh, group certification systems. So, this is more precise and uh, it's considerably more limited in, in the EU. 
how we expect that the group certification system is going to be implemented. So uh, one of the key uh, things is that uh, only farmers can be uh, members of a group. And uh, those farmers, they need to have uh, specific characteristics regarding the uh, how large they are or uh, the, the uh, capacity that they have uh, for supporting this uh, 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 a system like this. So, uh, in uh, as a main rule, uh, farmers that uh, the, the, the individual certification cost would uh, be uh, more than two percent of their total annual organic turnover, their income. They can be part of a group. So, if they uh, if we, if this cost of certification, if they uh, submitted their undertakings individually, could represent something less than two percent then they cannot, they have to be denied by the CB or control authority. Uh, well, th there is also the, uh, uh, the case of having a, a, a more objective uh, criteria in place, uh, like the organic production output. This is a, 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 a term used by uh, Eurostat, and uh, it has to do with uh, the financial capacity of operators in the European Union. But it's up to the member states, competent authorities, to decide how they're going to uh, uh, to handle this particular uh, uh, criterion regarding who can be a member of the group or or, or not. Or maybe it could be it, it could be that it's going to be uh, uh, regulated in more detail in the implementing acts that we still expect. Uh, other criteria uh, would be that the operators, the farmers, cannot have. Uh, 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 more than five hectares under uh, under management in case in any case of perennial or uh, annual crops or 0 0.5 hectares only in the case of greenhouses or 15 hectares when they uh, are you know, managing uh, only permanent grassland so uh, the uh, the groups they have to be established in a member state or a third country okay for third countries it's, it's already applicable with the current uh, uh, control system that we have in place uh, and the, it's uh, part of regulation 1235 uh, the groups they need to be legal entities so it's not uh, something that we can orally uh, uh, you know uh, decide or uh, agree on uh, if we are a group of producers, we need to have uh, some kind of uh, legal personality. And the members, they need to have production sites in a geographical proximity to each other. So it means that they cannot be too far away. So we're still experimenting arts about that, but the, uh, there would be some kind of maximum distance uh, regarding the, the, the uh, uh, the, the members and the, uh, the production sites from uh, from each other. Uh, as we said, they need to have the groups need to have a joint marketing system, and then they need to uh, sell the production certified as organic. And uh, the most important thing I will uh, end with this is that they need to have uh, and a very effective system of internal controls in place in order to verify compliance with uh, the organic production rules. Otherwise. Uh, the groups will not be uh, able to be to get certified. Uh, last, uh, as a last key uh, issue that uh, it's going to change uh, with a new uh, regulatory system in place, and I will finish with this, is the, uh, the imports from third countries. So at the moment we have a, a, a system of equivalence that is in place, and we have two different um, uh, axes of, of equivalence. Either equivalence that is uh, uh, recognized by the EU Commission through trade agreements with particular countries. These, uh, these third countries are listed in Annex 3 of Regulation 1235 of 2008. Uh, if I remember well, the, the, there are currently 13, uh, 13 countries in, uh, uh, included in, in this Annex. Uh, to give you an example, it's uh, Switzerland is in uh, Israel, the United, uh, the uh, uh, Chile, one of the most recent inclusions, um, Australia, uh, and other countries as well. So uh, these countries they have agreed, they have trade agreements with the European Con uh, Union directly, and they are in control of the control systems uh, uh, implemented in in, in their countries. So. 
we have a, a, a second axis of uh, of equivalence, which is uh, managed directly by the EU Commission itself. So it's uh, those certification bodies that work in various uh, third countries that are listed in uh, in Annex Four of Regulation Twelve Thirty Five of Two Thousand Eight. So now, with the new regulatory system, we are going to uh, stop with equivalence and we're going to move to compliance. Compliance means that the, it, it will not be uh, accepted any longer to, for CBs in different third countries to have their own private uh, uh, production uh, standards and control uh, measures in place, but they will have to comply with a new regulatory system of, uh, of the European uh, Commission. So, uh, for those that have uh, some kind of um, experience with uh, the uh, United States NOP, uh, the USDA is uh, currently the scheme owner and the, 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 uh, the, the accreditor of the system. So, they are, uh, this is a system of compliance. There is only one standard in place, uh, and all, uh, all control bodies that are uh, that they, they want to uh, certify producers against this standard, they have to comply with the minimum requirements. So this is going to be the case for, for the uh, European Union and the European Commission from 2021, that uh, all the CBs and control authorities that will uh, want to certify products in third countries, they will have to uh, comply with the uh, rules identified in uh, the EU regulations and not provide uh, their own equivalent systems anymore. Uh, still, Products are going to be covered by COIs, by certificates of inspection, uh, when it comes to uh, importation of for certified organic products from third countries. And the uh, system that we are still going to use is this traces uh, system of uh, gov governed by DG Sante, uh, the trade control and expert system. And this is the overview of the system that we have now with the, uh, these are the import certificates for uh, certified organic products from third countries. So these are the, the, are the key changes that we expect uh, that we, uh, from 2021, according to the uh, regulatory framework of uh, the new regulation 848 that has, uh, will come into force uh, by the end of the year. Uh, fortunately, we don't have uh, uh, too much time to go in deep detail with the new regulatory uh, system. And of course, we are still missing the, the implementing acts which is uh, a very important thing in order to highlight you know, uh, more uh, the implementation of particular rules that are identified in the new regulation. So this will be the end of this presentation. I uh, would like to thank you for your uh, attention. And now I will stop sharing my screen anymore and uh, I'm open to discussion or uh, any kind of questions that you may have. Okay. All right, so I'm waiting for questions. Oh. Okay, is it possible for a legal personality that has a phone or culture competitive to apply for group certification for only some of its members? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. If we, uh, at the moment, we don't have about this uh, group certification question, I, I, I start with the last one. Um, judging from the experience that, you, that we have at the moment, uh, uh, from the implementation of the group certification system in third countries, yes, the answer is yes. That uh, for, for uh, an agricultural cooperative would be eligible for, for forming a formal uh, group certification uh, for, for organic. Uh, of course, they will, do not, they will not have the, the, uh, uh, the obligation to, uh, to participate with all of their members, all, all of their land also. So, 
uh, we still went. Uh, we still wait for the implementing acts we, we, because we need all these details from the European Commission. I know that they are working on these particular topics that uh, you are asking, but the uh, let's say that uh, uh, gross. Yes, the answer is yes. That uh, cooperatives are going to be eligible for group certification, and not with all of their members, only with some members. The Greek. Uh, you're welcome. So the Greek regulation will never uh, will never be made. So uh, yes, okay. Uh, normally, for every EU member state, when we have a, a, a new EU regulation in force, well, the, the, the member states will have to uh, uh, to adapt their own uh, legislative, you know, uh, uh, documents and their own legislation in order to incorporate uh, the new legal issues. Uh, and the new requirements set out by the uh, EU regulation in their uh, in their legislation. Uh, regarding that, I, I really cannot tell. Uh, I know that uh, the the, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and particularly the uh, uh, Directorate for Organic Production is uh, fully aware of uh, of the new regulation. So I just guess that they are working on the uh, implementing rules. Uh, also, uh, for for drafting the new uh, uh, Greek uh, regulation or legislation uh, for tw after twenty twenty one, but still, uh, we need to you know, to take into consideration the fact that uh, we are still missing the implementing acts. So uh, my expectation is that uh, we uh, will first have enforced the new regulation eight four eight, and then sometime. In the near future, we are going to see the implementing uh, regulation, in, uh, the, the Greek implementing regulation as well. You're welcome. Let me just see it. Uh, yes, just to verify that I have not read the chat. I just do it now because I, I, I was only focused on the uh, presentation uh, uh, during uh, the time that I was presenting this the slides. So, uh, yeah, I don't see uh, any other questions uh, from before. Uh, do you have any other questions, either orally or you can write anything? I, I just need to say here that, uh, you know, the, this uh, presentation was not for, for beginners. You should have been, uh, you know, some kind of uh, involved in a way with, uh, with the EU uh, control system in order to understand in, in, in its full extent. Any other questions, any other topics or things to, that you wish to clarify? Thank you too for, for attending. I don't know about that. Uh, maybe the the, uh, the project uh, facilitators may uh, may answer that.
Okay, let me also open my camera maybe. have a face together with a voice any other questions that you have uh, either uh, regarding the control system or uh, about the new regulation Okay, well then, I don't know, maybe we can call it an end, May or Anastasia. Uh, yes, we can end the webinar. Thank you very much. Okay.